So if you just looked at the description box, you see that I was attacked with my Amazon package by the concierge in my building. Hey, what's up, people? My name is Roman Anthony, and I decided to start a vlog because I moved to Paris in September, and it's been an experience. It's interesting, you know, being, you know, and I, like, before I moved here, I, I did a lot of research. Uh, for, like, the past year, I looked at all the blogs from, you know, young people, older people, white people, black people, Asian people, just, like, gay people. But what I didn't see was a blog about a younger, and I'm 29, so maybe not that young to some people, but, you know, a younger black American gay person. Those experiences I have not seen together like i've seen certain different experiences of how women of color have been treated in foreign countries or gay people for instance but it's been quite interesting for instance okay so let's just wrap up into it happy holidays merry christmas feliz cumpleaños happy kwanzaa happy hanukkah and since i just got back home from london yesterday january 1st Happy New Year's, because today is January 2nd that I am filming this. Um, so we're going to jump right on in there. I moved to Paris in September, um, and by October, I was back in the States for two months doing work. I am, well, I don't know if anybody happens to know, like, you can look at some of the stuff on here. I am an actor, which I do uh, in the States, but I'm also a licensed cosmetologist. So I work with a company called Glam Squad uh, and do a lot of freelance work in the States. Um, I've worked salons there. I actually was just in San Francisco shooting an indie film about um, the prejudices gay Asian males face in the dating community, in the dating gay com LGBT community. Um, it's called Chinks, so look out for that. Um, it's really good. It's a nice short and it has a lot to do with their experiences. Um, as well as I was doing a lot of hair projects. So I fast forward, I get back to France or whatever. Um, you know, it's been it's been quite interesting. Um, so basically, I live in the 17th only small and close to the 8th or like Champs-Élysées, Arc de Triomphe area. And on a few occasions, I've been asked how I can afford to live in my neighborhood. Um, for me, as an American, I would consider that to be a rude question to ask someone, but I assume the first time or two that it was just mere curiosity you know whether I'm shaved or not I do look a little younger than 29 so sometimes people are wondering you know how I can be where I am or do what I'm doing or something like that not realizing that as an American we work our a double snakes off very very hard and literally I've worked a whole year what three jobs plus in school um and every single day so if I wasn't traveling I was working and even sometimes when I was traveling I was working I still do that um but yeah it, it's it was very off-putting um I'm the only black person in my building I'm the only gay person as far as I know in my building I ain't seen nobody pop up on Grindr or any of the apps or whatever like that that right under me um I I don't really see black people in the neighborhood, nor African people, um, um, mostly white, some Arabs. I live, basically what I've been told is that this is a lot of law offices around here, uh, legal businesses. It looks very cute and residential. Um, to be honest, I, you couldn't really tell, for me, I've only been to Paris, what, like three or four times before moving here. I've come since 2016, and the first place I stayed was Airbnb in the 18th Marie de, uh, uh, Saint Juan, uh, where I was told it was like the Bronx or kind of hood. However, when I got there, it didn't seem hood to me. So I'm assuming if this is y'all hood, it ain't that bad. So then I get here, I wouldn't know if it was the hood or not the hood. I just assume, well, people just say the higher you go up in the, uh, the districts or on these ones, um, the more ghetto it gets. And then you get to a certain point where it's just more residential. So I'm thinking I was in the hood or whatever. It's, it's Europe. It, the, all the buildings are like thousands and hundreds of years old or whatever like that. So they just look really great and gorgeous. Um, but yeah, you don't really see that much diversity in this neighborhood. I will say that. Um, the concierge people, there are these two, uh, this couple that looks after the building. Uh, the wife, she cleans the building. And the guy, I don't really know what he does, but he's 
every time I step out of the door or I'm waiting in the lobby for Uber, he likes to stare, come out of his door in his apartment and stare at me. Now, I'm actually in the Chambre de Bonne, which is like the servants quarters of the old buildings in Paris. You can look that up, but it's like usually at the top of the floor. It's like a, the size of a bedroom. Mine just has like a little shower right there and then the toilet is out this door down the hall. So, yeah. It's like, you know, and I got like a, a, a mini fridge and they've got two little stove burners and a sink right here. So it's not really a huge space. Obviously, I don't have to pay that much. I pay like, what, um, 650 euros, which I think is about 753 or 5 American USD. So it's not that big of a deal. A lot cheaper than my New York rent, my LA rent, and even my Atlanta rent. So I get back from London yesterday. I took the bus, which was quite interesting. I might have to throw some clips in there because it's the bus to Paris. I've flown, I've taken train, so I figured I would see what the bus was like to save me on renting a car and driving because I might not want to do all that. But I took the bus, the bus got on a boat, and then we got off the boat and it had some restaurants and stuff. It was almost like a cruise ship a little bit to get over into uh, London. And then on the way back, the bus got on a train. So we're in a train <laughs> and on the bus. That was quite interesting. Um, but it was a nine hour journey. Obviously I had to get up really early. Um, I didn't have time to eat or anything like that. I just basically got up early where my friend stays um, um, near Wembley Stadium area and got into the central area of London to get my early bus back to Paris. Um, I wanted to make sure I was in Paris at a reasonable time. We got here about 7.30 at night. Um, and then with the trains being all messed up because everything's on strike, I didn't really get home until after 8 o'clock. It's probably like 8.30. So I get here and there's a note under my door um, basically saying that I've received too many Amazon packages and they are not paid to accept these packages and that I should pay them extra to receive my packages. Um, the only thing about that is for my Amazon delivery because there are two security doors. So the first door you need a pin code the second door is for the main apartments, really. They have like their little scanners. So you can find their names and then call them and they can buzz you in. But for me, or I guess anybody who lives on this floor, we have a fob and we use the fob to get into that second door. So being that I'm in the suburbs, um, I'm assuming if the Amazon delivery guy was to just use my code to get into the first door, there would they could just leave it in that little lobby area and I can come down and get it. I mean, with technology and Amazon today, usually you can track to see where the truck is going, where it's at, what it's doing. Sometimes you can get text or email notifications. So I usually try to stay up to date on that. Nowhere in my Amazon description, even translated uh, with translator, does it say to drop it off at this lady's house or whatever, or these, this married couple's house or whatever, the concierge. Um, which is weird because they usually give you your regular mail. However, it's from my understanding now that they can give you regular mail, but packages is a special thing. And, you know, um, it was quite interesting. So, like, I go down with a note just to apologize and say that I did not, I never, you know, wanted them to, like, receive my packages or anything like that. This is a mistake. I would like to fix it. So, I go downstairs January 1st around 8.30 and... Uh, most of the door is glass, so the uh, uh, frame part is wood, so I like lightly tap on it because I saw that the uh, lights were open while I was coming into the building and the window was open. Um, so I lightly tap on there, he answers the door and slams it in my face. So I knock a little harder because now I'm like, excuse me? So I knock on the door, he comes, he's yelling and stuff in French, uh, presumably cursing, I, like he was very aggravated. And she comes with my box and throws it at me. So I kind of move out of the way because like it was coming at me, I don't know, like I know what's in the package. It was like this ring light that I'm using right now. So it's got a little pole, some glass, whatever, etc. Um, so I move out of the way because for me, I'm just like, if it actually hits me, then I'm going to feel like I need to hit you back. And just in self-defense. So I'd rather it not hit me and we just call it an accident. Um, so I move out of the way or whatever. And she's like stopping him for, I guess, being aggressive or aggravated. Mind you, I live in this building. I pay rent in this building. And my rent pays their salary. So there is no reason why me trying to say like, oh, je suis désolé. And try to like understand and explain the situation would warrant me being aggressively assaulted um, in any form or fashion. Um, 
So there are groups on Facebook. There is the Americans in France group and American expats or something in Paris group. Um, and I posted what happened in the group and majority of the responses were, well, one guy said, well, does the box hurt that much? And I was like, and most people was like, well, how do you feel like it's racism? And I did have to explain like, you know, the several instances or occurrences that I've been through where things seemed a little racist. And like, you know how, like if I speak to you, like, you know, bonjour, bonsoir, et cetera, and you don't speak to me or you just stare at me or whenever I'm in the building waiting for an Uber, you're staring at me outside, you open your door and you wait and stare until I leave. Or whenever I have guests come over, you want to stare them down. One of my guests almost, it was like, he knew I was French because I was about to go off. Like, and I'm just like, you know, that's not my personality to just go off on somebody, especially the people who maintain buildings and stuff. Um, they were very rude to me on several occasions. They would speak to people like who were speaking to me and not speak to me. Um, so then around, like it was Christmas just passed. So since my place is so small, I can't really get a tree. So I decided, you know what, um, back in uni or college or university, uh, they say uni mostly out here, um, you know, they would put like cute decorative wrapping paper on the outside of the door to show a little festiveness. So I just found some black wrapping paper with these gold snowflakes and I thought it was so cute. And I was like, okay, this is chic, it's cute, it's not too loud, it's not too busy, it's not doing too much. Um, I'll just put this on the door. So I put it on the door. They had someone from the floor beneath me come and say, you know, it's like, oh, I just want to know if this is Christmas decorations. So my kind of sin to Virgo self was just like, well, it is Christmas time and it has snowflakes on it. So I would assume that's a Christmas decoration. And it was like, so does that mean you're gonna take it off after the holiday or after Christmas? I said, well, that's usually what you do. You take down holiday decorations after the holiday that they're decorated for. Um, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding why you're knocking on my door about like, a Christmas decoration when other people got wreaths on their door etc etc you know it's like well they was like it's um, not a cute look for the building I'm like first off I'm on the top floor so there's only five other people on this floor and I believe we're all expats we've all like spoken to each other like hey in passing everyone seems nice or whatever um, and I would assume that they would just knock on my door if they had a problem with my Christmas wrapping on the most basic floor mind you the servants floor so it doesn't look like it's really been updated since the they people who, who in this building has servants. So I'm like, okay, it's making the building look bad. Okay. Um, which I could post a picture and y'all would be like, bitch. So he was like, oh, just make sure it comes down after the holiday. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't in violation of any building codes. I'm not from here. Like when I lived in the States, I, after high school, I went to community college to do California real estate because I was like, I need a break from school, school, but I still want to keep my mind active. But then I became a criminal justice major at Pace University. So I knew a little about law too. I know a little about real estate. Now, I don't know any of that stuff here in Paris or whatever. So I was like, let me just message the leasing company because if I'm in violation of something I don't want to be in trouble so I just take it down or whatever um but usually an, an instant where someone is what they said someone complained or whatever and I'm just like well how would somebody who doesn't live on this floor complain somebody beneath your floor I'm like the cleaning lady saw it obviously I was getting my wi-fi and my stuff hooked up and she came and then she all in my apartment like this I'm like yeah girl I didn't change the curtains I didn't got this little cushion cover thing and little throws and I'm trying to make it a little more homey for me since I have to be here for a year okay like you know it wasn't my first choice but since it, I was getting this place when everybody was going back to uni or going to college in the fall season it was the last one on my list and it, I got approved so I was like well we just gonna do what we gotta do if we want to go to Paris that's what it was so I'm trying to make it comfortable and cute for me um so she all up in my apartment. So I was like, oh, do you want to come in, girl? I'll offer you a drink, some tea, some wine, whatever you need. Like, you know, it ain't that serious. Um, and I'm sure she's the one she, who complained because, like, hours later is when the guy came to my door. Um, and he happens to speak English. So, and I guess she got him to write the note that was on my door, which was basically suggesting that I should, you know, pay them or like bribe them or whatever for them to be nice to me. Bitch, I'm not paying nobody to be nice to me. If you don't like me, you ain't gonna like me. Don't fuck with me. But do not try to attack me or assault me is because then we're gonna have a problem. So that is where that was. Um, and this 
is interesting. I did not want this to be my first, like, you know, blog or vlog about living in Paris. It's because I've been here so many times before and it is so amazing and so gorgeous and there's so many great things. And obviously I can't hold a whole city or province or country of France or whatever to certain individuals because you go to America and you get the same, some people get the same treatment for being minorities. Like, I don't know if it's xenophobia, homophobia, or racism. And people were like, well, how can you pinpoint which one it could possibly be? I'm all like, well, that isn't, it. actually, any of that isn't the case. The fact that somebody tried to assault me and I just said, hey, how do I go about filing a formal complaint or whatever, just in case a situation escalates, I don't want to be the one in the wrong. Or it's like, well, why didn't you report anything? How can we take your side? You're a foreigner or whatever like that. You hardly speak the language. You file no complaints. We have no proof of anything that you're saying or whatever. And then if I happen to attack their ass back or whatever, then I'm going to be the one in the raw. I'm like, so I was like trying to get information on what I'm supposed to do in these situations from these other Americans. And most of them pretty much shitted on my ass and was like, well, you know, how do you know if it's racist? I'm like, it's that not even the point of the whole thing. It's not, I don't care whether it's racism or not. You can be racist. Just don't do it. Don't try to attack me. I don't care how you feel or how you think about something or somebody. You ain't got to say it to them. I feel a lot of way about a lot of things, a lot of people, etc. I don't say it to them. If I don't know you, I ain't telling you. That's not my prerogative. So don't come up to me with your whatever your business is. Um, so like, luckily there was some very helpful people in the group. And then also found out um, uh, that there is a minority group for uh, expats and parents, which is amazing. It's because what I've sort of understood from this group is that a lot of the minorities have worked really hard. Um, they came here and they're still working hard to be here. And most of the non-minorities are people who retired here or always had money in the States. And just because you got money in the US and you go to another country, like whether you're a Democrat, Republic or whatever, it doesn't mean you're less prejudiced. Like, obviously, I'm like, obviously, you probably moved here so you can pay less taxes and save more on your money or whatever like that with your retirement or whatever the case may be because you didn't want to pay the American government or whatever like that. I don't know. The point is, as an American, I felt like other Americans would be all like, okay, that's terrible, but this is X, Y, Z, what you need to do in order to make sure that you're protected. So in this instance, I felt very unprotected and I'm not... Like, luckily somebody did give me links and I actually am going to put that in the description box because if anybody watches this and they're traveling to Europe or Paris for uh, specifically or you decide to move here or whatever and something like this occurs or happens to you in your, your living space or whatever and you feel uncomfortable in your living space, you need to know what to do. That's just all that is. If you're in the States and somebody in your building attacks you, you know who you can contact or whatever like that. I'm not saying I need these people to be fired, but they definitely need to be reprimanded. But if we're aware from, you would be fired. That would be considered an aggravated assault. I would have the right to press legal charges. If you get me. One second. Sorry, my mouth was getting a little dry. Excuse me. Yes. But stay tuned. This vlog is not just going to be about me venting about the frustrations of being black, gay, and American, living in a foreign country. No. I'm a hairstylist. I love beauty, cosmetics, etc. So I'm definitely going to be throwing in some tutorials. I'm also an actor. So any products that I do, whether it's going to be here or in the States um, or in music or whatever the case, will be presented on this channel. I want to collaborate and work with other people and other artists, other expats that I find and me. Um, so we'll get into that. We'll talk more into that. Um, and I actually do have some tutorials to post. Like I literally just waxed my face like two weeks ago. It's looking pretty good still, whatever. Um, so I'm going to post that video. Um, and just like, you know, tutorial things. I've made a couple wigs when I was on holiday in the States. I'm going to say holiday because I wasn't home. But I was still working. Um, I'm going to say work holiday. Um, I made a couple wigs, colored them, cut them, etc, etc. So we're going to throw those on there and I'm going to do some more. And then obviously when I travel to other places, I was just in London. I have plans to go to Budapest and I have clients lined up there. Thank by the grace of God. Any good? Um, so I'm excited about that. But we're going to try to keep this video under 20 minutes. I don't know. Under 25 maybe. Maybe I'll put it in the intro of maybe some clips or something. But that was my first 
vlog about moving to Paris. Um, and it's not to discourage anyone of moving to Paris or anywhere else abroad. Like you should never be afraid to get out into the world. However, always keep in mind that the troubles you face in your country, you might face in other countries and maybe even worse. Um, so it's good to have thick skin, but it's also good to be smart and to get all the information you can in order to um, accurately and appropriately handle these situations. Had I been a younger person, um, back in the day, <laughs> I would have went into fight or flight mode, but instead I just looked and I really was like, you are so lucky it's January 1st. I'm not trying to bring this negativity into the universe. I don't want to be this, portray this or anything like this, but I am from San Jose and East Palo Alto, California. For those of y'all who know about it, you know about it. So yeah, we are growing and we are working on ourselves and hopefully we can take this journey together. For any of y'all coming to Paris, hit me up. I am more than happy. You can even find me on couch servers if you need a place to sleep or something like that, hit me up. I don't know, I'm a very open person, you'll find, but I'm, I'm, a, but I'm very legit and real. I'm a Virgo, so we're very like cut and dry. We tell you how it is, no sugarcoating. And like, again, I would never suggest that you pay somebody or bullshit somebody for them to like you. Um, you know, I still tip when I go to the bars here. I tip the coat check when I go there. And I know it's not a tipping culture here because they're quick to remind you, we're not America. We actually pay our workers enough to where they don't feel like slaves. So you don't have to tip. I do because if I like your service, that's also a thing in America is when you like something, you appreciate it and you show that. Now, I've tried to send a card and I actually put a little wax seal stamp with my initials in cur uh, handwriting or cursive or whatever. And it was all cute and stuff with the stuff and had money in it or whatever. They didn't even open it. They actually just slid it back under my door. So, I mean, what you want from me? I'm tr I'm trying. I like, I like We do that in America. You would tip your concierge. You would give them something on Christmas, the mailman, etc., the garbage man, somebody. So don't make it seem, especially for the Americans in that damn group, that... I'm unaware or culturally unaware of something because this isn't just a French thing. This is a, what I'm gonna call a common sense thing. If you live in a certain type of neighborhood or place, certain things are expected, okay? That's just that's just what that is. So for some of y'all Americans, y'all can kiss my A-double snakes. It's because that right there was just ridiculous how you guys responded to some of that. And it, you know, had I not been American, it almost would have hurt my feelings. But being 29, spending 29 years of my life in America, like this black gay and proud and happy or whatever like that multi-ethnic if you want to call it with a very diverse family or whatever like i'm good i'm good so we're gonna be cool on this because um it's been quite interesting it's been quite interesting i can't wait to explore more and i can't wait to meet the people who do not hate people for no reason because i know when I was younger and I was working in like the juniors in Times Square in New York or different restaurants and places and then hair salons or whatever, whenever somebody came from a foreign country, I was always thrilled and excited and wanted to know like how to say please, thank you, excuse me, basic things in their language. Um, even when I travel, I learned those uh, basic formalities. Um, I've always been excited. Like I literally have emails from people in other countries who were so happy to meet me or work with me or in certain instances or for me to host things and events that they've done. Um, yeah, and I would pull out translator and go on Google and try to help if you were from Russia or wherever you were from, especially if you was coming to Juniors. This is in Times Square. We got people all over the world. So I was literally pulling my phone out to translate something every five seconds. Like, but here, when you don't speak their language, they literally have an issue with you. And I'm like, yes, I'm trying to learn French. Because even some of my French friends piss me off every time. They're like, well, why don't you learn French? Well, bitch, if I could just learn a language in 24 hours or overnight, don't you think I would? Like, who the hell would want? I'm like, obviously, I'm learning, but it takes time. How the freak do you expect me to become fluent over fucking night? I'm trying not to curse, I'm sorry, but it's so hard because the stuff frustrates me. And for y'all French friends out there, oh, I want to flip you off right now. <laughs> because I like you guys say this, but I'm all like, well, did you learn English overnight? Or did you learn these other languages overnight? Or do you, I'm like, obviously, no. 
And when I'm sure when your French self came to America, people were like, oh la la, oh my God, you're so French and so cute and your accent and voulez-vous coucher avec moi, ce soir, et cetera, et cetera, like y'all always seem to want to tell me. However, when I come here, the only thing you want to say is, well, you should learn the language. Don't you think I... No, I just plan on coming here and speaking English to everybody, to a whole foreign country. Mm -mm. All right, that's it. This is going too much over... But uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch. I'm about to post some more videos. Um, and if you want to hear more about my actual personal experiences in Paris, hit me up. Because shoot, even my first trip here, that was a movie in 2016. So um, yeah, let's keep it fun and cute. And we'll be in touch. Bye.